So Blender version 4.3 was just released, and in the update there have been some changes to the UV editing options. So just recently I was working on this Christmas snow globe object, and I needed to UV unwrap this wooden centerpiece. So I applied this nice wood texture from Ambient CG, and then I went into edit mode, and I added some seams here. So to add seams, you can hold down the Alt key and select the loop that you want to add the seam, then you can hit the U button, and you can click on Mark Seam. The seams are those little red lines there, and I added a seam there. So I cut out the top and I cut out the bottom and then also right here at the end I added another seam to cut out this part here so I can lay it out flat. So then you can select the entire mesh in edit mode, hit the U button for the unwrap settings, and in the old version of Blender there is just one default UV unwrap option. However, in the new version of Blender, Blender 4.3, as well as having the other options for UV unwrapping, we now have these three UV unwrap options. There's angle-based, conformal, and minimum stretch. Now I compared angle-based with the old version of Blender and it UV unwrapped the same way, so I believe angle-based is the default one which we had earlier in the older version of Blender. But you might be wondering what each one of these does and which one is best for your project. Now from the Blender 4.3 manual, which I'll have linked in the description, the angle base uses angle base flattening. This method gives a good 2D representation of the mesh. The conformal uses least squares conformal mapping. This usually results in a less accurate UV mapping than angle base, but it performs better on simpler objects. And then finally, minimum stretch uses scalable locally injective mapping. This tries to balance minimizing areas distortion and minimizing angle distortion. Now really for whatever project you're working on, I'd recommend just trying each one and seeing what works best. So for the base of the Christmas snow globe, I can hit U and I'll first do angle base. So you can see with this one, it cut out the top, it cut out the bottom because we have those seams there. But then for the piece here on the side, it kind of made it round. So I could maybe scale this, maybe rotate it, kind of stick it right there. But the problem with this UV mapping is that the grains of wood are going to be angled. So they're like angled down here and then angled up and that's not really what I want. Let's hit U and we're going to use the conformal instead and for this object this method of UV unwrapping actually works even worse. So if I scale this maybe rotate it by 90 degrees just like that the top and the bottom work fine but here on the top you can see that this part is larger but then this part is smaller. However on the 3D model this part here and then the other part on the other side is the same size. So on this part of the mesh the texture is going to be larger whereas on the back of the mesh it's going to become smaller because of that stretching. Well let me select everything again, I'll hit U, and this time I'll do minimum stretch. And you can see this one actually works really well for this object. So I'll just select it, maybe scale it up and rotate it. So you can see now if I look around here on the wood, the wood grain is all going in the same direction. Now if I go into full screen here with the UV unwrapping, you can see there is still a little bit of stretching. You can see like right here it's a little bit wobbly and it's a little bit wobbly right here. So this is where a really great blender add-on called UV squares comes in. Now UV squares is a free blender add-on so you can download it for free on github with the link in the description but the add-on creator is also selling the add-on on the blender market so if you'd like to help support the creator you can use my affiliate link in the description and that's also an affiliate link so I'll also earn a small commission if you purchase through that link. So you can just install the add-on just like any other add-on in Blender, and then you can go to the UV editor, and you can hit the N key to open up the side panel, and then I will hit the L key just to select the linked vertices for this UV island. You can now click on two grid by shape, and you can see it's going to perfectly flatten it all out. So this part's flat here, and then this here is flat at a 90 degree angle. So here on the object, now we have a really nice UV unwrap for the base of that snow globe. Now here's a head model that I sculpted and I used this model in my retopology for beginners tutorial and also my tutorial on how to texture bake high poly details to a low poly mesh. And then I just applied a UV grid to the object so I can see how the UVs look. So let's try out the different new UV methods. So I'll select the entire mesh, hit the U button, let's try angle based. So you can see here on the front of the face the grids are a bit larger whereas down here they're a bit smaller. Overall this is an okay UV unwrap because you can see I added seams here to kind of cut out the mesh and cut out the eyes. Let's try the next one though, so I'll hit U, and this time I'll use the conformal. So with this one, I would say, again, for this model, it actually looks a little bit worse because you can see the UV grids here are even larger, and so there's a bit more of a contrast. And when you're UV unwrapping, generally the best outcome is if all the UVs are about the same size. Well, let's try the third method. So I'll hit U, unwrap, we'll do minimum stretch, and this one actually worked really well. So you can see the size of the tiles on the face and the neck are about the same size, and it's really 
really quite even. Of course, there is a bit of a seam there, but that's because I had to add some seam somewhere to kind of cut out the mesh, but that looks really good, and the size is about the same, and it's pretty even throughout the entire object. So once again, using the minimum stretch worked really well for this object. So I hope you found this helpful, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to watch some more of my Blender 4.3 update videos, you can check those out with the links in the description. I have a video on Blender's new video editing features, also Blender's new procedural Gabor texture node, and also Blender's new sculpting brushes. So you can find those linked in the description. So I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for watching.